And David Stark, Emma, Emma Stark's husband, starts to prophesy over me. He says, uh, you're going to write a book and it's about seeing in the spirit and it's going to impact the East. And he starts to prophesy actually about China and Indonesia and all these nations. And I'm like, hang on a minute. You know, I only found out recently that, you know, I'm a prophet and I only found out recently that I'm called to full time uh, church ministry in this call. Welcome to Unshakable Stories, Unshakable Truths. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to look and see into the spiritual realm? Or perhaps you've heard of terms like a seeing prophet, but you don't particularly understand what it entails. Well, you don't have to wonder any longer. Joining me today is Sarah Jane Bickett. She is an ordained minister, a director of prayer at the Glasgow Prophetic Centre, and one of the co-hosts of Power Hour alongside Emma Stark and Sam Robertson, just to name a few. Sarah Jane operates as a seeing prophet and carries an impartation to help God's people grow in their prophetic senses. She's recently released an incredible book called Seeing Beyond. And so without any further ado, it's a very warm welcome to you, Sarah Jane. Thanks, Abigail, for having me. It's great to be with you and whoever's watching, hello to you. Sarah Jane, I'm intrigued to know this. Really, if you wouldn't mind, take us back to the moment when you got that nudge from the Holy Spirit that you needed to scribe seeing beyond? Well, um, to be honest, I've had a word, you know, when you get a word from the Lord yeah. years ago, literally, I can remember it, it was 2011. And um, as we were then Glasgow Prophetic Center, we had just moved into our new offices, our first office building, which was small. Um, and there was just a small team. And David Stark, Emma, Emma Stark's husband, starts to prophesy over me. He says, uh, you're going to write a book and it's about seeing in the spirit and it's going to impact the East. And he starts to prophesy actually about China wow. and Indonesia and all these nations. And I'm like, hang on a minute. You know, I only found out recently that, you know, I'm a prophet and I only found out recently that I'm called to full time uh, church ministry in this call. And God, you're saying I'm going to write a book. And it just seemed so far out. You know, when you get those prophetic words sometimes yeah. that are horizon line life words. And um, so I always had this kind of in the back of my mind. So. And um, I was prayerful about it. And I felt like, yes, I know, Lord, you want me to write a book, but just let me know when the timing is. And as you go through your life, you know, you sometimes think, well, this book is going to look like this or it's going to tell this story or it's going to be these testimonies. Um, and then, of course, the um, the pandemic hit. And we, as you've mentioned, Power Hour, I'm co-host on that with uh, Emma Stark and Sam Robertson. We started that as a thing that was meant to be for a few weeks just for our church family and we thought well if a few other people online find it great i hope it blesses them what is god saying as we're in this lockdown and of course weeks turned into months and <laughs> months have turned into now and uh, nearly two years and you think wow god you knew what you were doing and and during that first few weeks um uh the publishing house who published Emma's book, The Prophetic Warrior, which is great kind of understanding of prophecy and war, uh, got in touch and said, we'd like you to write a book. And it was almost like that word then was ignited in me and the Lord say, it's now time. It's now time to write it. And so, yeah, it was very much that sense of a germinating word in me hmm. that needed to come out, but it came out very differently. And I think the book itself came out differently because of the year we'd had by the time I'd written it it was January last year I started writing it finished it for April the first deadline so there was that sense of we'd been through lockdown we'd been in that enforced rest that yeah. enforced time of going digging deep with the Lord right we all had to go well those of us that chose to <laughs> went deep with the Lord and that sense of actually I'm, I'm wanting to really mine those places with you God of that the unknown of who you are the mystery of who you are that first yeah. corinthians 2 truth of spirit taught wisdom and that sense of lord take me deeper and so having gone on that journey then the book really is the output of my life as one who sees in the spirit engages in the spirit and understands that but also after that almost like baptism of lockdown 
um, that was very much, I guess, brought it out a different flavor than I expected it to. Um, but very much written with Holy Spirit, yeah. very much. These are the chapters. This is what you need to say. These are the testimonies that you need to put in your chapters. So it was very much myself with Holy Spirit. And it was such a joy to write. I loved every minute of it. Beautiful. Sarah Jane, what's one thing you wished everyone knew about the prophetic? Wow. Wow. Well, I think how easy it is actually when we don't work so hard. I think we can be those who who work hard and strive and use our brain to try and think our way into revelation. And actually, it's almost like the total opposite, Abigail. Yeah. It's that sense of as you trust in the Lord and trust in the Lord in us, in me, in you, in you watching, that Christ in us, the hope of glory, wow. that we are already one with him in spirit, that we are already a citizen of heaven on the earth. So we already have this duality of access to the unseen and the seen realms. That sense of wisdom is ours in and through Christ. It's just a case of resting in that. And actually, the more we are practicing the be still and know that I am God, the abiding in him, the John 14, 15, 16, 17 truths, where we are under that prayer of Jesus, may they be one as you and I are one, Lord, in us, so that there is this manifestation of the fruit of a life hidden in Christ, yes. which is the wisdom and the revelation of Christ. And I love Ephesians 1. I love that prayer of Apostle Paul when he's really saying to them, look, I'm praying for you that you would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He doesn't say so that you can see things and know things, but he says so that you may know God more. Mm. And, and so I think, again, we have this mindset of, I, you know, and I talk to a lot of people saying, um, SJ, I'd really love to see angels like you do. I'd really love to see what the demons are doing. I'd really love to see in the spirit. But I say back to them, look, it all starts with seeking the face of Jesus, yes. having that hunger kind of stir up in you. Lord, I want to know you more and I want to stay in you, Christ in me, the hope of glory, but also hidden in Christ. I call it almost like that Jesus sandwich, which seems almost heretical to say, but you know, <laughs> he's in us we're in him yeah. and we're all one i love that and it's easy for us to receive information uh that's revelation and wisdom because we are in christ and he is in us and so that fusion if you will oh. of our spirits with his enables us with these to know god more and i think for me when you make that your prayer lord i want to know you and i want to know your ways you know psalm 86 teach me your way o oh lord that i would walk in your truth yeah. give me an undivided heart that i would fear your name it's not about you know let me see things let me know things so that i'm all that it's the let me know you more that i can walk more closely with you and know you more and i think it's about that that hunger and that overflow, if you will, of, of knowing him that is the real key and that intimacy is the real key and the abiding is the real key. Because when we have that end of I want to do and see, we bypass the, the fusion, which is really the thing that opens that whole realm up. And our God daughter uh, died not our daughter our goddaughter died very young mm -hmm. in, a, in an accident she had a horrible accident she was in hospital for a week uh, five days actually and then and then died and it was the most devastating thing that we've walked through and obviously for the for the family we it was like blood family but not blood family it was that close you know um and as we were going through that journey of grief and trying to understand lord how did this happen um i had a prophetic word from a senior minister at a training event that I was at for healing prayer of all things. Come on now. And what I love is I believe you're bringing freedom right now to our viewers who are listening to this because 
what I think is key sometimes is that we need to demystify certain terms so that people have a greater understanding that it's accessible to us all. And I love the example you gave of Apostle Paul. And particularly in the West, you and I were talking before we went on the air about you know, the different um, expressions of, of, of spirituality as it relates to China, Japan, and, and mm. even Africa. But here in the UK and in Europe, for instance, there sometimes tends to be, and I'm generalizing here, anyone that's watching, but there tends to be that, that sort of repelling of, of wanting to not, people want, not wanting to look different, not wanting to yeah. come across as, as peculiar, although scripture says that we are a peculiar priesthood. Um, mm -hmm. Help anyone who could be on the edge of stepping into what God has for them next prophetically, but is wrestling with this idea of seeing the spiritual realm and understanding that it's not harmful. Yeah, I think I think we're fighting a number of things, aren't we? Um, there's, there's the front of, excuse me, the, the spirit, if you will, of religion yeah. that says, actually, we need to work and we need to follow laws and rules that look like order and so everything needs to be almost straight jacketed you know if you will in the spirit to stop that disorder then that's and again we're generalizing and making a picture quite clear then you have that sense of uh, a lot of as you say in the in the east very much used to seeing in the spirit talking about the spirit realm as if it's real but accessing it in a, a way that is, you know, all doors are open, demonic, yeah. uh, uh, and, you know, from ver a variety of, of ways through ancestral worship, through familial spirits, mm. you know, through doors of um, occult practice, and any of those doors are not safe, um, and not safe because they can do as damage later on, um, all they can do is damage very quickly as soon as we engage the spirit realm through any demonic doors. And so there's that sense of there's the balance of it's locked down a lot in the West because it's seen as too far out of those boundaries of the spirit of religion. And it's so loose often in the East where even in Judaism, the Kabbalah and all of that, the mysticism of a lot of religions are, there's a free for all. And even in, in, in India, there's a lot of religions that would say, yes, let's engage with the spirit realm. Mm. So in a way, Christianity in the West is behind the world's religions who have already engaged in the realm of the spirit, but wrongly. And so for us, it's, and what I teach in the book is it's meeting Jesus first is the safest way. And even if you're watching this and you've engaged in the realm of the spirit and you've seen demons and you've seen things that have given you pain or fear, there is a way to do it without pain and without fear, which is seeking Jesus first and meeting Jesus first, because he is the way, the truth and the life. And he is the gate. He's the doorway of access to the fullness of the kingdom of God, which is in multiple realms. We we read in scripture, it talks about the new heavens and the earth in Revelation 21. There's heavens, plural. There are realms of, if you will, heavens. There's where God himself resides in the throne room, if you will. And then there are places in the realms where the Lord wants to, I believe, open up to us. But Abigail, as we were talking about earlier, always safely through Jesus yeah. who is the gate through his blood yeah. that, that covers us. And again, not in a fearful way, because in Christ we have all authority in Christ Jesus, Matthew 28, he was given all authority. But there's that sense of we have been so shut down hmm. in the Western church from saying that's new age, it's dodgy, it's not of God. But all you, know, all you have to do is read the book of Ezekiel or read the book of Daniel and you'll see that actually all of that authenticated out of the word of God. And when you read the word of God with the eyes open of the unseen realm, you see how much uh, the church, both in the Old and the New Testament, engaged with unseen realm visitors, the angelic oh, okay. and other things. And so there's that sense of the living creatures that we read about in Revelation. Yes, you know, on. I think that the religious church the straight jacketed church, if you will, that says we have to do things a certain way. We, we've missed out on so, so much. Mm. We've missed out on so much of the expression of the Godhead 
when we keep it clean and let's just keep it what we can see. If we can see it, it's all right. If we can't see it, we're, we're dubious about it or we're heretical about it. And actually, Paul says the opposite. Get your eyes on the unseen because what's on the unseen is eternal and what is seen is temporal. My goodness. Um, and that's 2 Corinthians 4.18. That sense of actually when we fix our eyes on it, it becomes clearer. And the eternity that is set within the hearts of men mm. connects with the unseen. And actually, I believe that God tells more of his story through that and even more understanding through scripture when we actually start to focus our eyes again through Jesus, always starting point, finishing point, middle point. We never leave Jesus um, and Holy Spirit. But there is that sense of we're working with him into that realm of the spirit and moving beyond anything that would have been um, considered uh, safe, yeah, of, of what is seen. Absolutely. And so it, it does require it does require boldness. It does require bravery. And I think it requires help with the spiritual director to use that kind of loose term yeah. to actually sharpen yourself with so that you don't go off on a tangent, because if you've had any new age background or occultish background and um, been involved in anything like that, then you, you could you know, we can be deceived. We're told to test the spirits and that's important. There are some best practices, but actually in the book, I go through quite a few top tips as I would call them to help yes. navigate that step by step by step to keep you safe. Again, not in a fearful way, in a liberating way. Um, but to know that, you know, there is a safe way um, that enables us to move out of that religious mindset. Absolutely. You know, you, you're seeing in the spirit because Sarah Jane, you've literally just gone through the next couple of questions <laughs> I had lined up for you. But what's important, because this is a beautiful segue into your book, Seeing Beyond, and what a, an appropriate title it is. Um, the fact that the spirit realm is, is, is as real as what we see with our natural eyes and um and, and you've beautifully illustrated that with so many examples but i think it's really important to be reminded as christians wherever you are watching this that the spirit realm the spiritual realm is as real as what you see you smell you can touch and i think that's so key in what you expand on page 17 in your book so i want to fast forward um and i love a particular part of your book where you emphasize on the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit and the activations. I mean, if you see my book copy, I've got notes and everything. Like it's been a workbook for me. And the prayers that you end each chapter with, I'm like, oh my goodness, you just give the language that we need, you know, to go to the um to go to Jesus with. But I want to focus on page 22. And you you give the reader an invitation to lay their hands on their hearts and to pray over themselves for the gift of the prophetic, uh, the awakening of their spiritual senses and to commit their senses to God. How significant is this? Oh, you know, I, I feel like it, it's, it is significant in that, you know, again, back to Paul, he tells us to lust after uh, the gifts to eagerly desire the spiritual gifts especially prophecy and so there's a sense of actually you know a lot of us sort of uh, have that attitude of well if it gets activated in me that's great I'd like to see I'd like to sense I'd like to engage in the realm of the spirit but lord you know if it comes to me I'll be happy with that but actually I think this is a prayer of apprehension where we say god I'm giving you my spiritual senses I'm giving you my sight my hearing my taste my touch you know my smell even i want to be able to engage lord with the fullness yeah. of the realm of the heavens that you have created and so there's that sense of even in the earth realm when the spirit realm breaks through and you begin to smell even the aroma of of jesus as he's in the room 
you know, the, the cassia and aloes that we read about in scripture, or even the smell of roses, you know, from even the, the kind of the love story of the Song of Songs, that sense of breath like apples that we, again, we read about in scripture. So those kinds of, those smells, um, but also then the the taste, you know, the, the tasting of the word that is honey on our tongues and bitter in our stomachs, like the prophets of old, in that sense of actually, we're supposed to engage with the realm of the spirit in, in our senses fully loaded. So I do really feel like praying that over, over ourselves, is really really key and I spent oh gosh I, I want to say it was a couple of years I prayed that prayer Lord you know enlighten the eyes of my heart Ephesians 1 again we're back to that enlighten the eyes of my heart which is the page 22 prayer um spirit of wisdom and revelation come upon me so that I would understand you and know you more God and and show me your ways you know there's that sense of actually I open my senses to you and I give you my senses and submit them to you because let's be honest there's a lot of questions over this whole area and some people will run a mile you know and say I'm not touching it because it's dodgy but again I would say read your bible and just see how many people saw and engaged in the realm of the spirit. We're only told not to worship angels. We're not told not to talk to them. And actually you see lots of people talking to angels in scripture and engaging in that unseen realm, the, the unseen realm breaking through from, from the natural realm so that we see it and mm. we're seeing on the other side of the veil where we are on the earth and even transported to places, whether in the spirit or in your body. I don't know, Paul said, didn't he? <laughs> so I would say, let's be bold, Christians. Let's yeah. be bold in Christ and say, Jesus, well, if you could walk through walls, walk on water, you know, if you could Come see on. in the spirit, Nathaniel under the tree, the fig tree, before he knew he would have been seen, you know, if you could see things, if Peter had visions and, yeah. um, and uh, Rhoda, the, the servant girl, you know, thought it was Peter's angel at the door rather than Peter because they had more of a sense and faith for an angel than they did for Peter being broken out of prison. you got to know that angels were commonplace. So I think, you know, we have to get biblically normalized and, and recognize actually a lot of this. We're playing catch up on Abigail. We, yeah. we are really playing catch up on in this era of the new. Come on. Um, what's. A seer, prophet. Well, there are two types of prophets uh, mentioned in Scripture, and I think it's First Chronicles twelve. I think it is speaks about David's prophets, and he talks about two types of prophets. He talks about the Nabi prophet. And he talks about the seer prophet. So Nathan is a Nabi prophet, and Gad was a seer prophet and and there's a distinction between the two and so there's this sense of kings of that era would have had not just one type of prophet working with them they would have had a couple and basically it's a uh i was going to say label but that doesn't feel right it's um a, a description of the type of revelation that these prophets receive so a nabi prophet is one who receives revelation by the bubbling up of words and mm -hmm. so when you've met a prophet who is basically speaking the spirit of the lord is saying or the lord is saying and then all these words come out like a flow then oftentimes they're operating in that nabi the bubbling up of the flow of words you're not translating, you're not hearing what God is saying and then talking. You are just literally releasing that word of the Lord. That would be Nabi. Then the seer, uh, the, the understanding of that, the ancient Hebrew for that, chose and Ra, means basically in the pictorial language that they cut through the veil between heaven and earth. Cool. And so the picture for that is a tent, which is the veil between heaven and earth, and then a scythe, one of those old cutting instruments for grass or hay. And so the sense of the, the Ra Chose prophet, the seer prophet, cut through the veil to open it up, to open up what was unseen and make it seen. And so often you find that seers 
those who receive revelation uh, that way would be getting visions with their eyes open, visions with their eyes closed, mm. dream, and actually seeing in the realms, multiple realms of the spirit in real time, in the future, in history, just as people like the prophets Ezekiel, Daniel, and others emulate in, in scripture. And we can read that very clearly that their revelation came even with Daniel, where he had a vision in a dream. I mean, wow. how many people have visions and dreams, right? Yeah. And it's so very visual, very engaging. He's in it. He's aware of, of angels and other creatures in it. And there's that sense of you're almost like in a movie vision mm. where it's very real and you're in the spirit. And I think we have to get biblically normal about what Paul meant when he said in Ephesians 6 about praying in the spirit. Yes. Being in the spirit, engaging in the spirit realm. And I, I think, you know, you see Daniel particularly emulating that. Oh I hope that answers your question. Well, then I've just got to keep an eye on the time because this is the fastest uh, 25 <laughs> minutes I've ever known. But that's what happens when you're in the company of greatness. This is wonderful oh, teaching, you. Sarah Jane. Why is it critical for us to ask the Holy Spirit to bring to our mind anything that we, we may have watched or, or heard that may have cloud, clouded or diminished our senses? Mm, I think that's a really good question because often we can, um, we can be very aware. Now, a lot of people who get revelation by seeing and feeling, uh, seers would tend to be very feelery and emotional and so sensitive. So you might have even your children, some of you watching will have children who are prone to receiving revelation this way they will feel everything they watch you some of you adults maybe feel everything you watch or hear you're very sensitive to words you're very sensitive to what you watch on tv movies etc and you'll be very aware of that and almost want to not watch it because it makes you feel um pain sometimes i think actually some do feel mm. that pain of heart or pain in their body and that's because you're very sensitive in the spirit then you have people who would be generally looking to exercise their spiritual muscles more. And so it's, you know, we go to the place where the Lord says, turn the enemy back at the gate to watch actually what is coming into your eye gate, what's coming into your ear gate, actually what's coming out of your mouth gate and your heart gate. So it's that sense of search me and know me, God, see if there be any wicked way in me, Psalm 139, you know, make sure we're praying that prayer of David, keep short accounts, yeah. but also be very aware of what you're watching and what you're hearing affects your the dissonance, if you will, it can give dissonance to, to what you are receiving from the Lord or interference, like a radio signal, you know, it can be interfering with it or a TV signal. Yeah. So we might not get clear revelation from the Lord if we have lots of things that we're watching that are blocking our eye gates or our ear gates. So I don't know if this ever happens to you, but you could be watching an innocent drama on BBC that looks like it's very safe as in nothing dodgy. And then all of a sudden there's a scene and you go, no, I can't hear that. And I can't oh, see. Yes. That. Yes. Yeah. Enough. Yes. And it's like, I sit, I mean, I often sit there with my eyes closed and my fingers in my ears. <laughs> is it pasture? Is it pasture? And um, because it, 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 you know, it does affect you and you don't want those images in your, in your mind. If it happens, you know, if it does happen, you can pray, Lord, please, edit my memory of anything that I've seen or heard that's in interfering with my engagement with you and what you want to talk to me about. You know, it's, it's a quick win. It's a Lord, I'm sorry for watching that, but let me say, you know, if you're, if you're repeatedly watching pornography, for example, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get clear revelation. If you're constantly watching horror movies or listening to foul language or, or, or releasing foul language, it's highly unlikely you're going to get pure revelation. And so that's not a, you know, that's just a fact. It's a Lord help me good. clear out my, if you will, my antenna of my spirit, unblock me from anything that would get in the way. And chapter five in the book's really helpful for that in a sense of what's in my home, what's in my life yeah. that could be blocking what it is you want to share with me. 
or could be bringing a dissonance to that, or even in some cases, speaking from a spirit of divination rather than Holy Spirit. Because quite often, people who come into the Lord, we haven't necessarily shut down if they've been involved in the occult, new age, anything that's opened up a third eye, which is how witchcraft sees here in the spirit realm. If that's not been closed, you'll be getting Holy Spirit revelation mixed with divination. And so that's really important to, again, work through that with the Lord and, and submit all of those gates, the unseen and the seen gates to him. And I believe, as you say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me anything that's blocking that, yeah. He will do it. Yeah. And as you pray through and as you pray through, as, as he leads you, you'll get that freedom and you will start to see. And the other key is that intimacy piece coming back to Jesus. Lord, I want to know you more. Spending time with him begins to unlock us. It unlocks us. The more we do that, the more depth of revelation and understanding we'll have. Oh, my goodness absolutely explosive i must say sarah jane this is so good i'm going to watch it back myself and, oh, take, right. take notes. And, and so you know a final question as we sort of come to a close what's the best advice you've ever received Ooh, are we talking about anything like shoes or are we talking about the spirit realm? <laughs> you take you, you take your pick the best advice i've ever been given wow I think the most profound thing that ever happened to me in my walk with Jesus after all the years of Bible study, after all the years of just faithfully walking with the Lord, we had a a really tough time um, and our God daughter uh, died, not our daughter, our God daughter died very young Mm -hmm. in in an accident. She had a horrible accident. She was in hospital for a week, uh, five days actually, and then, and then died. And it was the most devastating thing that we've walked through. And obviously for the for the family, we it was like blood family, but not blood family. It was that close, you know. Um, and as we were going through that journey of grief and trying to understand, Lord, how did this happen? Um, I had a prophetic word from a senior minister at a training event that I was at for healing prayer, of all things, year, um, a few months later. And he said, I see a picture of you sitting with Jesus under a tree. Uh, Rather, sorry, I see a picture of Jesus sitting under a tree uh, and he's inviting you to come and sit with him. As soon as he said it, it opened up in the realm of the spirit. I could see Jesus sitting on a picnic blanket under a massive oak tree, looking at a view and almost like with a space next to him. And it was, and he just said to me, you have, the senior minister spoke this word over me, you have permission to rest and sit with Jesus. And that was the most liberating thing that I'd ever heard because I was thinking, what do I do to fix this? Mm. How can I help my friend? How can I help my husband, myself, my children get through what has happened? You know, how do we work through this? What do I need to pray? What do I need to do? Do I give up my job? Because it was all a bit of a mess. You know, it was like, you know, when grief hits and just breaks everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I was like, Lord, and it was just, just come and sit with me and permission to rest. And I could feel like the, that just that the weight of responsibility lift off me, the false responsibility then that I'd been feeling for fixing my friend's issue of losing her daughter, of trying to be the solution for their family as well as my own. And that sense of actually all I need to do is sit with you. And I ended up coming to the end of my job within a couple of weeks after that naturally, and then had three solid months of every day sitting with the Lord, walking with the Lord, talking with the Lord, And you know what? That for me changed my whole life, not just my walk with Jesus, changed my whole life. And I was seeing in the spirit and I was activated in the gifts, but it was not from the place of rest. It Mm. was from the place of what can I do for you, Lord, and how do I fix things? And so that changed everything for me. So for those of you that are feeling like that, like, God, what do you want me to do? when we come to that place of rest and that permission just to sit with him, you come into that place of liberation, that place of 
fruitfulness where Jesus said, when you abide in the vine in that place of rest, there is fruit and it's fruit that lasts. And I don't want to be pulled into doing agendas, you know, that are man-made, that are somebody else's dream or somebody else's man-made thought, rather that sense of actually, Lord, I want to sit in you and you to have fruit that lasts from my life. And I know that I know that that is from sitting in rest and abiding in him. And that for me changed everything. And so, yeah, that would be my, my, my learn that turned my faith journey and took me deeper with the Lord. Did I go off track sometimes over the years? Yes, I did. But has the Lord been faithful to bring me back to remind me? Because you know what it's like, you're a busy mom, you're working, you get into that, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to keep up. And the Lord is like, come away with me, come away with me. You know, it's like, Lord, I'm coming, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it's that sense of rhythm, discipline of sitting with and, and abiding with him and resting with him in all things, as well as when we're doing our work. Ooh. It's it's a it's a discipline to learn. And actually, those that would be called the mystics, those who learned about the union with God in the truest sense of with Jesus Christ, there are many types of mystic, but the, the types that actually were fixed on Jesus as Christians learn that of of sitting with him, resting with him and fruitfulness coming and the supernatural just followed them everywhere they went. Oh. Um, yeah. Oof, what a profound note to end on. And so for those of you that want more, because I can imagine we're just only touching the, um, the surface as it, as it were well, um, my advice is if you haven't read Seeing Beyond, you really do need to take down the details that are on the screen and get yourself a copy. And not just one for yourself, bless your friends, bless your relatives, bless anyone who you feel this book truly, it's a workbook, it's a manual, um, will be a, a tremendous gift to them, including those of you who have church uh, groups, cell groups, and so on and so forth. Bless a lot of people because um, we need this. We're just catching up here in, in the West. And so I encourage you to follow uh, Sarah Jane, all her details, Instagram, Facebook, and as well tune in to the um, Power Hour every Wednesday where you'll find Sarah. Um, they do often rotate, but it's often Sarah Jane, Emma Stark and Sam and, and different other co-hosts, which is amazing. And you've got the Global Prayer Watch as well, Sarah Jane. Yeah, the World Prayer Watch. Yeah, we do pray every Friday morning at 8.30, just for whatever the Lord is saying, what he's watching um, and where he wants us to, to participate and co-labor with him in the earth. And we have all sorts of people from all over the world. Brilliant. And I think, you know, as you're talking, Abigail, the one thing I would say is, you know, we can't be the victorious church unless we're the seeing church and the sensing church. And so I think the Lord is saying, well, let's be the victorious church yeah. in this era. We were made to be that, to advance the kingdom. And actually, once we get to see and engage in the unseen realm, the church and the kingdom of God is unstoppable in its advance. So powerful. Sarah Jane, I bless you. Thank you for your time. And uh, My I look forward to connecting with you again. Thanks for having me. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those episodes where you want to rewind and replay and watch it again and take down some notes and hopefully have the book beside you so you can dive into those chapters that we just literally touched on. Until then, I'll catch you same time, same place. Remain blessed wherever you are. Bye. Bye.